Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dave Marvin. To my right is my father, Devontae Taylor. I'd like to take this time to thank you all for joining us, especially my father, family, and friends. I'd like to take this time to thank you all for joining us, especially my father, family, taking the time out of his daily lives, and most importantly, waiting their families to be here with us. My peers, my professors, and I greatly appreciate it. As I step aside and pass the torch to my partner, Mr. Glover, he's, gonna, he's here going to provide us with today's prompt in the agenda. Thank you. Okay, well, this evening is joined by five lovely panelists and former student athletes. Um, they took time out of their day, their busy schedule, to come in and talk to us about their transition from, the, from, from college into the real world. Um, we'll first start off by letting each panelist introduce themselves, giving a brief background on where they're from, what sport they play in their current profession, and after that, we'll, we'll go through prompts for them to address. And before, before concluding, we'll let all of you get a chance to ask any questions you may need answered. So, give them the floor to Dan Simmons. <coughs> Alright, how's everybody doing today? Good. 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 I used to be a receiver back in the day, you know what I'm talking about? So my name is Dane Simmons. I'm originally from Rancho Cucamonga, California. Uh, went up to Idaho State University in 2002. I uh, actually came up here when Kevin Curtis was playing, and uh, we was having a good game, and then he just started running by everybody, and they, they took the game, you know. But long story short, I got my undergrad in marketing. I uh, went to grad school and got my master's in athletic administration. Um, shortly after, I started to apply to every job out there. You know, I wanted to work for the Dallas Cowboys. I wanted to be in athletics. I wanted to be a part of this, right? <coughs> Start applying. I got two interviews. One was with the Idaho State Stampede, which is an NBA development team in Boise. The second one was with the Salt Lake City Bees, which is like a triple-A baseball team here. So uh, I get all prepped up, put my suit on, I got my degrees in my bag, you know. I get down there, interview went great. So they called me, both of them called me back for a second interview. So, one second. Let me say it's very in improper to talk with gum in your mouth, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, long story short, I come back to second interview, and uh, Idaho State said, hey, they offer me, you know? So they, they take me on a tour of the facility, show me the basketball court. I'm sitting there with the, the vice president of marketing, and they said, Mr. Simmons, we're going to offer you $23,000. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to say, ah, oh, hell no! <laughs> I was like, after eight years of school, you all can $23,000. And I was like, damn, like, what am I going to do? I was like, I was like, I'm not an emotional guy, you know, but I was about to cry. I was like, damn, I can't do this. <laughs> so I went back to the drawing board. I actually had, I had one more class to finish in grad school, and I was, I was there telling the story to one of my friends in class. He's like, man, my friend is making one hundred fifty thousand dollars. I was like, is it legal? You know? <laughs> He's like, yeah, this man, he be selling like total, total knees and total hips. And I was like, all right, well, give me his phone number. So I kid you not, I, I called him up. I was like, hey, my name is Dane Simmons. I just got offered twenty three thousand dollars. I don't want to make one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So can you help me out? And he's like, well. This is what you got to do. Well, I asked him, I said, do I need a clinical background to, to sell like surgical implants? He was like, no, nah, man, I was working for Crest before this. I was selling two faces. I'm like, yeah, let's go. So, so he ended up sending me his resume, and I kind of like just formatted like my resume after his, but I didn't have a lot of experience. I just had like a GA position, and I sold some advertising. But anyways, I just kind of, I mapped out my resume, and I said, okay, I love athletics, but I'm not going to make no money here, so I'm going to start applying to like pharmaceutical jobs and get into sales and do that. And so what I did was I started sending it out to all these pharmaceutical companies, but my goal was I wanted to get into selling total joints, knees, hips, shoulders, spine, 
That's what I knew was that was where the money was. So I was just chasing the dollar sign. I didn't even know if I was going to like it or not, right? So I ended up getting an interview with a company called Praxair Healthcare Services. And uh, I ended up getting the job. And uh, what we sold was oxygen. You see those people rolling around with oxygen, <laughs> oxygen tanks, you know, and CPAP machines, right? And right before I got the job, they were like, you're our last hope for this branch. If you can't make it, we're going to have to close the doors. So I went to the drawing board, and in two years, I flipped the whole branch around, and I was like, yeah, I was making a lot of money. That company ended up getting bought out by a company called Apri Healthcare. And Apri Healthcare is owned by a company called uh, the Blackstone Group, which is an equity firm. And they bought out Praxair, and I made it through the transition. And they had all these perks that, that, first, that first month during the transition, I made as much money at that time that I, I ever thought I would make. So remember that $23,000 offer, right? That first month during the transaction, I made $22,000 in that first month. I was like, let's go! Let's go! But I still, what, I still didn't hit my goal because, I mean, I was doing a lot of boring stuff. It was redundant. I was just like, it wasn't, it wasn't a challenge to me selling oxygen to see that machine. So I started to apply to these total joint companies. Because now I got the healthcare experience, I got my education, I'm ready to go. So I started applying to Stryker, Depew, Medtronic. These are all the big companies, all these total joint companies, right? Didn't get one interview, not one. After being like a top sales rep, master degree, and I said, okay. So this is one thing that athletes have over everyone else is that we are determined, we don't quit, we keep fighting. I said, okay, well this is what I want to do, so I'm going to do it. So I, I started sending emails, I wrote one email, like, all right, so I wrote an email and I copied and pasted a whole bunch of time, that's what happened, you know. <laughs> so I plagiarized myself. So I ended up sending this email out to small, uh, small healthcare companies that did total joints and all kinds of stuff. And I sent it out to the CEOs of the company, and I sent it out to the human resource departments. Because I was applying to all the jobs on CareerBuilders, Monster.com. I was doing all that. Everything that everybody else was doing, I was doing. I said, well, I got to do something different, right? So CEOs, human resource departments. And I live in Public Hotel, Idaho, right? So I did this to about 20 companies. And two weeks later, I got a phone call back from a company called Microline Surgical. And they were like, are you Dane Simmons? And I said, yes, I am. Well, you received your email. I was like, yeah, I said, that was like 20 people. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they said, uh, we got a new product coming out. And it was a, it was a tonsillectomy product. And basically, this tonsillectomy product was a four set that you went in, you basically extracted the tonsil and it desiccated the tissue. It was totally different than anything else out on the market. And they were like, we have zero dollars in sales in Idaho. You're going to start off at zero at a, as an independent contractor. I said, give me the contract and give me the whole state. Please. <laughs> so five months later, I was leading the western region in sales. So they ended up giving me the whole state of Utah, which I couldn't cover by myself. So I started to bring on reps under me. And so they decided to deal with IEC. That started to snowball. Then they gave me California or Southern California, <coughs> gave me the San Diego territory. Brought on more reps, and we just started rolling. So that one company turned into Simmons Surgical now. All right, two years later, I got over 20 contracts with 20 manufacturers, right? And last year, we did $1.2 million in sales, all because I was hungry, right? Nobody can tell you what your destiny is. You have to choose. Right? You decide your own fate. And that's what I did. I took my fate in my own hands and I made <coughs> something of myself. And after that happened, I never had to apply for a job again. Because people will start to call you, right? When you become the best in the business, doesn't matter what business you're in. Whether it's football, whether it's flipping burgers, I don't care what it is. If you are the best at what you do, you are needed, you are wanted, right? So that's what happened to me. Two weeks ago, I gave a presentation like this. Uh, 
All right, so we talk about sending surgical, but I'm also the vice president of marketing for a company called Access Home Health and Hospital, vice president of marketing for iPhone app. It's a healthcare app called I'm Your Doc. Well, I was giving your I'm Your Doc presentation to this home health care company, right? Talking about all these HIPAA requirements, HIPAA regulations, all that good stuff. <coughs> Two weeks later, they called me and was like, hey, um, we know you're busy, but uh, we want you to help us with our sales. I said, well, I, I got like 15 hours a week, that's all. They were like, I said, just give me an offer. Man, they gave me an offer worth $75,000 on top of everything else I'm doing, right? And I'm not here to brag about how much money I'm making. I'm here to tell you that you're here to get your degree to get a job, right? And if your job is about making money, it's either about making money or doing what you love. You got to decide which one you want to do. But if you can make money and do what you love, which happened to just fall on my lap because I didn't know I loved healthcare. I didn't know I loved being an operating room. I, I kind of just followed the money and it just happened. But you just gotta, you gotta create a goal. You gotta follow, create a path to that goal and then accomplish your goals and be the best no matter what. And I just, I didn't come up here with any kind of agenda. I don't have any notes. I don't even know if I follow what they wanted me to talk about. <laughs> Hopefully, y'all got something from this. And that's all I gotta say. We were kind of running the wellness program. We didn't have a budget. 
uh, before they started the official program, and I was running um, the program. So because I had that experience, um, she actually hired me as her assistant um, when, once I graduated and was done and had my green card, because um, it was cheaper to hire somebody with a green card than somebody who needs a work visa. It was complicated. Um, anyway, so she hired me as her assistant, but they didn't have the budget to do a full-time position. So because I was an advisor in the hyper department, I was split between the hyper being an advisor 40% of my time and then her wellness assistant 60% of my time. Um, so ideally, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I knew I didn't want to be an advisor uh, for the rest of my life, although I liked it. It was fun. Um, Jason really liked it <laughs> because I could help student athletes out. We had a lot of them in the hyper. Um, but ideally, that was not what I wanted to do. But I knew that if I wanted to eventually keep going with the wellness program stuff, I knew I needed some experience. And so that assistant position that I got, even though it was only 60%, it was worth my time. I learned a lot under the coordinator. Um, so I was the assistant for um, three years, and then she was actually offered another position at the hospital. And because I was her assistant, um, nobody else knew the program like I did, and they didn't even open up the position. They asked me if I would take her position as the employee wellness coordinator, and it was a no-brainer for me, um, although I know JT, Amber Ray, and Brian weren't happy with me. Um, I had to do what was best for me, so I took the, uh, the position, um, the employee wellness coordinator position, and it was interim at first. They didn't know if they were going to be opening up the position or not. Um, it was kind of a year by year um, whether or not they would keep me there, if I was doing a good job. Anyway, it's permanent now, and I've been there. Um, in July, it'll be three years, um, and I absolutely love it. As Dean said, it, you got to do what you love, um, and then it doesn't really feel like a job. Some days it does feel like a job, but for the most part, I mean, I get to teach boot camp. You know, I get to hear about stories of people who no longer have to take their blood pressure medication, their glucose medication, cholesterol. You know, they've lost 50 pounds. They feel great. They can play with their grandkids now. So it's very rewarding, and I personally, I love that kind of stuff. So. Um, I think I've answered all of those questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not as excited. <laughs> but I love what I do, and so that's the most important thing, is to love what you do, and even if it takes a little bit to get there, and if at first it's not the right thing, or the, the one thing that you want to do, eventually you got to make those steps um, to get to where you need to go. So, Get at least uh, more and more uh, less exciting. <laughs> yeah, my name is Kevin Curtis. I uh, I'm from here in Utah. I grew up in South Jordan. Um, I was up here uh, as a walk-on. I played two years at uh, Snow College down in East Utah. Y'all um, yeah, been there, but uh, in Logan Small. <laughs> Compare, but, uh, so I was there for two years, and then I uh, walked on up here. That was I came up here in 2000. I was here from 2000 to 2003. And uh, I don't know, we got any walk-ons in here by chance? No? Yeah. Yeah, it's not the most glamorous route. You know, you kind of got to, you know, a lot of times uh, when school wants you, they tell you to come. You, you know, when you're a walk-on, you're basically asking them to come. So. It was a little different route, but uh, you know, I was given some opportunities when I was here, and uh, and just tried to make the most of them. And, uh, after my junior year up here, uh, I started getting some some NFL agents, you know, talking to me, and uh, started trying to get me to leave early. And I was just, you know, about a year before, I'm thinking I was doing PE for my major. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do, maybe coaching. I really had no clue. And then I. Uh, then I changed it, and I kind of thought I wanted to do something in business, you know, the business route. So 
so I changed it to marketing. But to be honest, I was thinking about being a fireman like that. <laughs> I really didn't know. Like I was trying to figure it out. And uh, obviously, uh, the sooner you kind of know what path you want to take, uh, the easier time you'll have through, through college and to be able to use all the resources you have to get you going on that career. But, uh, you know, I, I was doing this football thing. And it wasn't going too bad. You know, I uh, had a good junior year and. Uh, you know, I, I actually went on a church mission, so I played football in three years and came home. I, I redshirted up here a year, and then, um, you know, I, a lot of, there's a lot of people responsible for success I had here, but, you know, I was able to lead the, the nation in receiving. I, you know, I was an All-American, and, you know, I started being kind of opposed to this question of, you know, it's a good time to leave. You know, it's time maybe you should uh, think about leaving early. And so to me, it was just like, whoa, you know, I, you know, I was thinking, Maybe firing is the life for me, and then, well, you know, I might actually be able to do this in the building, you know. So uh, I started giving that some thought, and uh, I decided it's best for me to, to stay. You know, I'd only played one year, I hadn't played football in three years, so, uh, you know, I had a good year, but, uh, you know, I, I think I knew some things maybe my agent didn't know, and that was I don't think I'm quite ready, you know. I think there's still a lot of work for me to do, so I decided to come back and uh, play another year and get my degree, because I mean, um, the whole time I was planning on doing something else, so I, I thought it, I, I, it was kind of important to me to have something, you know, to show from my time up here, from my school, and that's having a degree, you know, something to fall back on. So uh, you know, I ended up um, doing all right again the next year, and you know, I um, ended up getting drafted in the third round by the Rams. I played uh, played out my contract there, and. Um, I was really fortunate to go to a team with two pro, you know, really good receivers. Um, I'm showing my age, but you know, I showed up there and uh, uh, Tory Holt and I had to for the receivers there, and uh, it was really fortunate for me to learn from some, some pros. You know, I watched everything they did because I'd seen, you know, they won Super Bowl, you know, they've been to the Pro Bowl multiple times, and so uh, it was a good opportunity for me to learn from some of the best. And uh, I, uh, no matter what you whatever life takes you after college, you know, try to find the people that know what they're doing, you know, and pay attention to how they do things. Um, I mean, you might, know they're, they're human, they're not perfect, you might not want to do everything they do, but uh, <laughs> there's, uh, you know, uh, guys, people that have success in whatever industry you're in, you can learn a lot from them. So I, I kind of patterned a lot of what I did as a professional after, after these guys were kind of like mentors to me, and, uh, you know, I was able to get myself in a position to, have a lot of options after my first contract. I had a, a ton of teams to choose from that all give me opportunities to come in and start and be a starter. So uh, I uh, was able to sign. I ended up signing with the Philadelphia Eagles, played there three years, and kind of started getting the, the injury bug and uh, getting old. And uh, so I spent my next two years kind of on and off the field with injuries and bounced around with. Uh, I was in uh, Kansas City, Miami, and Tennessee. So in all, uh, I ended up getting, I played eight seasons, but they had credit for nine. Uh, I won't go into how that works. But, uh, you know, uh, I was able to play nine years uh, in the league. And uh, about a year and a half ago, two seasons, I played the last two seasons. I decided to, uh, I was done. You know, partly my decision, and sometimes it ain't your decision, you know. It's, uh, I don't think any athlete necessarily ever wants to be done. So it's, uh, that was kind of an interesting time. but. Uh, Given the opportunities I had, I just felt like, uh, you know, I've done what I want to do, and I look forward to what's next in life. And, and now I'm in a place where I'm, I like to say retire. You know, I say that sometimes, and people are like, you can't be retired. You're too young. So, uh, especially golf with some older guys, they don't like that. <laughs> I paired up with some, uh, some of these older guys that are retired. I try to tell them I'm retired. And, all upset. No, so. It sounds a lot better than unemployed, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> I should probably be sitting where y'all are. Right? You know, I'm actually in the middle of a transition, and, uh, and the, to be honest, I uh, I kind of chose. Like I, I didn't want to. I wanted to have a couple of years to not work. I don't know. Going back, if I do it again, it might not be the smartest route because. Uh, you know, I know I talked to a couple of players even just a week ago. I got a buddy, and it's still playing in uh, Philadelphia, tied in there, and uh, you know, he just opened a restaurant. He's he's got a couple of little businesses starting, and uh, I actually told him like, you know, it's really smart when 
when you plan, the resources you have available to you, the networking. I mean, as a player, I mean, you, you, you can do whatever you want in a, lot of, in a lot of cases, a lot of cities, and I mean, you, you're never paying for anything. You have people, you know, I can't think of how many times people give me the card saying if there's anything you need me to do. And uh, that's one thing, if I, can, if I could go back, I think I would change. You know, I didn't take advantage of that. I was just good playing, you know, and making good money. And, you know, but one day, you know, it's, it's a small window for a guy like me, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not, I, I still know there's a lot of resources available to me, but I think I could take more advantage of that as a player. And so, but I, I always wanted to give myself a few years, you know, if I was to play long enough, make enough money, I, I hope to be in a position where I could uh, give myself a little bit of time, rather than just jumping into something. Um, it'd be better if I already knew what I wanted to jump into, and, you know, then I don't think that that time is necessary, but, um, that's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm working on studying for the GMAT. I'm looking back, going, looking to go back get my MBA. You know, the, the NFL will pay for your school. You got about five years once you're done playing, so I'm uh, taking advantage of that. And in the meantime, I'm kind of messing around with some trainings, football camp, and more so just to see if uh, if I like it. You know, I think a lot of times you might think there's something you want to do until you jump in and actually experience it a little bit, try it out. You know, you may you may find out you don't like it. You know, that's. I'm kind of trying that out a little bit now to see if that's something I'm interested interested in. But uh, um, yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at. So uh, I'm actually be listening to these guys you know, along with you because uh, I'm working on the transition myself. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mike, you got any questions? Burns. I played here for two seasons and five games. Uh, my college and athletics career is much more boring than his. Uh, it was taken away from me by injury. Um, Doc Lyons, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, I came from Carlswood, California. It's near San Diego. Um, I am probably the youngest one here. Um, and I graduated with my bachelor's in long constitutional studies thinking I was going to be a prosecutor until all my former lawyer professors said you're just going to be arguing technicalities and I said no. <laughs> so I was clueless, really clueless. Um, in a kind of weird way, I was thankful that I got hurt because it allowed me to kind of have the time to explore what I wanted. Um, I thought I wanted to go into coaching. No, <laughs> not at all. Um, I didn't really enjoy all the traveling that women's basketball required. Um, and so once again, I was clueless. Um, then Coach Peebly said, try doing the internship with Jake Garlock. So I was like, hey, I wanted to be a lawyer, compliance goes hand in hand. <laughs> Did that, um, I didn't even finish my year internship when I got my job at Weber State. So now I am an academic advisor and compliance coordinator at Weber State, so I'm a year Football players saw me on the sidelines, probably, in purple. I'm not gonna lie, it was weird. <laughs> I stayed quiet the entire game. Um, but yeah, my my story is pretty short. I'm still figuring out what I want. Um, I probably will go more of the academic route and be an advisor eventually. Um, compliance takes a certain personality, and I have too much humor, so it doesn't really work out. Um, uh, so pretty much I'm a little bit in the transition, um, kind of know what I want finally, but I still don't know what I want at all. Um, and I mean in the future I want to travel and possibly get a doctorate and I but I have my masters in physical and sports education and we'll be walking on the second. So that's my short story. <laughs>
All right, guys. Um, mine's going to be more of a reality check because I'm just kind of a high school English teacher. <laughs> I'm making all the big money, but somehow. So. My mom tells me I'm successful, and she's proud of me. <laughs> Walker uh, played football with Kevin and, and JT actually. Okay, back in uh, I played in 2000-2001. Okay, I was a JC transfer from Southeast Idaho. Okay, born and raised there. Um, basically, this is this is kind of how I got into. I'll answer your question, Walker. Right? Yeah. Okay. He, he asked a question out here before this panel even started. I said, just wait and ask me the question, so I'm going to answer it now. He asked me, how did you become a teacher? Okay. Like Kevin, going through school, I had no idea. I was majoring in English. Why I was majoring in English, I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> it's just like one of those things you fall into, right? The path that you follow. I, I don't know how it happened. I was good at it. I enjoyed it for the most part. Um, got a, a minor in, in business and ESL also. I didn't have any aspiration to be a teacher. I didn't, okay? Um, like Kevin, had a, a decent career here at Utah State, started getting some looks, and uh, thought maybe I'd make some money in the NFL. And that time came, um, ended up just getting a free agent deal with Baltimore. Uh, went back and forth, okay, with, uh, you know, with some camps. Got cut in fall camp, okay, really short lived. Um, I guess the closest I came to money was the contract that you sign when you get there, the tentative contracts. With, and some of you guys have experienced this, they mean nothing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get your hopes up. Okay, I'm here to tell you. All right, they'll get ready to, they don't care. You know what I'm saying? It was like a three year contract worth, I don't know, 1.2 million league minimum. It was just an offensive lineman, okay? And so, when that happened, it was like, oh my hell, what am I going to do now? <laughs> you know? And, um, but I got my degree, okay, and I figured, you know, with English, there's a lot of things I could do with it. Um, so I came back, I'm on campus, you know, in the old athletic building. Some of you guys might remember that. Karen Hamilton. You guys know Karen, right? Okay. One of the greatest ladies I think that's ever been here in Utah State. Um, Kevin, you remember Karen? Okay, I'm still still good friends with Karen, but anyway, um, I don't remember why I was here. Just to wrap up some academic stuff, and Karen said, "Hey, Jim, you know what are you doing?" I, said, I don't know. And I just got cut. Maybe waiting to get picked up again by another team, which never happened. Um, she says, "Are you interested in coaching football?" I says, "Yeah, that, that sounds sounds fun. Sounds interesting." Although, like I mentioned, I never put any thought into it at all. She says, well, I know a coach out of Skyview High School who was looking for a line coach. His name's Perry Christensen. Here's his number, okay? So I called him. Perry, hey, Jim Walker, just, uh, you know, finished up playing here. Heard you're looking for a coach. Yeah, okay? Meet me this afternoon at the south end of the school. So I drive, like, from here to there, okay? He hires me on the spot, all right? And um, you got to understand since high school football. Okay? <laughs> the guy was just glad to get some dude with some playing experience. Okay? You can't imagine some of the slappies you get. Well, you know, anyway. So he hires me. These guys, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the kids, fell in love with, with coaching, okay? And I thought, you know what, I think this is what I want to do. I think I want to, I want to, think I want to teach and coach and be around this, all right? So I came back and um, enrolled in the education program that fall, all right? And um, finished up my degree, obviously in English, you know, with uh, an emphasis in teaching English, all right? And uh, coached along the way, started out coaching baseball as well. That's what got my foot in the door. Skyview High School, which is where I'm still at, 10 years later, okay? Then my first check, okay, you're not going to believe this, okay? I remember this. Went in my box, picked up my, my stuff, 
all right? In the faculty room, open it up, $1,400 and change. And I thought, I mean, you get, that guy's, that was, that was tough. And I asked myself, really, is this really what I want to do? You know? I, really, I remember that moment. Here I still am. You know, I'm still doing it. Okay? Making a little better money now. Okay? I make uh, $2,000 now as the head track coach per season. About 1500 as an assistant football coach. All right? And, uh, you know, we get by. My wife works part time as a, as a teacher as well, so we can make ends meet. I'm happy. You know? Um, love what I do, okay? And um, I guess the message I, I would have for you guys is this, and I tell my students this all the time, okay, because I'm dealing with kids all the time, and I'm just being dicks in class and stuff. Because <laughs> they don't get it, you know what I'm saying? You know, I teach pretty much sophomores all the day, uh, all day. And, you know, we do some resume, some resume writing and stuff like that, and I uh, mean, you guys remember what it's like in high school. Okay, not a lot of thought for like the future and things like that. But um, you know, one thing that I tell them, the thing I want you guys to get from from this, from me, okay, is it's not what you know, it's who you know. You've heard that saying before, I know you have. Okay, now I'm, I'm telling you, the older I get, the more I know, the more that's true. Okay, all right. You'll find that out that soon enough that the opportunities you get are because of who you know, and I think that the better person you are, the better student you are, and um, just being a good guy, you know, it's gonna open up a lot of doors for you guys, okay? Your reputation is important, okay? And that networking is important, okay? It's gonna open up opportunities, all right? It did for me, you know? And I know I'm just a, a teacher. Okay, but that's how I got my that's how I got my job, and I love I love what I do. You know, so that's basically it. Thank you, God, for these stories. I used to see it may take a lot of different paths to get to your final destination, and it may take a while to figure out what you truly want to do. But right now, I'm just going to open the floor up to you guys, ask any questions that you want answered. Uh, my name is Jim Walker. Um, so, <clears throat> what were you planning on doing if um, this is the Hamilton family? If she didn't like tell you, what were you planning on doing? That's what I was trying to figure out, you know? I don't know, like I said, I, I was here um, just wrapping some things up and it was just kind of like, you know, what next? It was just a, it was just a shock of, it was, a, it, was, it was like, I knew that my athletic career was basically done, you know? And um, some of you guys are probably experiencing the same things right now, or maybe it hasn't hit you yet, but it will, you know? And uh, it's a reality check, you know, it really is. And that's basically where I was at, you know, just, just kind of that just experience on a reality check and uh, not knowing what was next. And I don't know, you want to call it divine intervention or what? Karen says, hey, you know, are you interested in coaching football? Right, and then here I am now, so. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah. Um, is it is it stressful, like not knowing for sure where you want to be or where you want to go? Do you fear anything in between? Um. Right now, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> uh, yes and no. If that makes sense. Um. Right now, I'm looking at jobs overseas. Overseas. Um, and my job doesn't exist. There is no such thing as an athletics department in Europe.
So I'm kind of looking into the marketing aspects, um, possibly work with the professional team over there, um, kind of get more of an understanding for um, kind of all the aspects of athletics because I would like to be an SWA one day. Um, and by going over to Europe, it will allow me to travel. And my parents would be happy with me still getting money in my bank account. So. Thank you. Oh, I have a question. For those of you, I don't know, no one said anything about families, but you or whatever. How do you balance your family life with your work life and kind of make everything all fit in together? And like taking care of yourself too. Kind of that free, those things. Anyone? For me, it's kind of easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the same boat. Yeah, but, uh, I've seen, I've seen it in, in my line of work, and I've seen a lot of guys with that. And uh, it can be a tough balance. I don't know personally, but, uh, so I, but I've seen some guys move from city to city, three or four teams in the same year, and eventually they're just like. The stress was too much, and they just they walk away. You know? So I'm sure that's a with people with that, that's going to be a huge. I think it's hard, um, but I think you have to put forth the effort. Um, and for me, in my profession, um, you know, to be, I have to be a good role model in what I do, being healthy and fit, and um, it's hard to balance that and the two kids at home, and the husband, and working full time. Um, but you honestly, you have to put forth the effort. You can't be lazy about it. Um, in presentations and, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, that I give to students, I go into classes and they, you know, I'm always talking about um, fast food and making time to exercise, because that's what I do. And it's the same kind of thing. You have to make the time for it. You have to make the effort for it. Um, yeah, it would be easy to, you know, work eight to five, go pick up the kids from daycare, and then drive through McDonald's or Arby's or somewhere fast to get a meal. But then, what am I showing my kids? What am I showing all of the employees here at USU um, that that's okay to do? Um, so I think honestly you just have to put forth the effort and um, put your family first if you can. But it, it's definitely a juggling act, but you can, sometimes you got to do what you got to do and if you have to work full time, put the kids in daycare, get up at 5 in the morning to do cardio. That's what you got to do. Well, I'm asleep, though. I'm still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. I guess, I guess the answer is... I'm kidding, Dan. I'm kidding, Dan. I'm kidding, Dan. I'm kidding, It all comes down to time management, right? I mean, you guys are doing time management right now, whether it's winter conditioning, uh, going to classes, watching film, doing all this calling your families, it, it all plays into training for later on in life. So I bet, I guess it's all about time management, which you guys are already accustomed to right now. So it's not going to be that difficult. And if you're doing too much, then you, you find out what's important to you the most, and you cut back on the things that aren't as important. Simple as that. I have a question for Kevin. So you were in the league, and a lot of people, like the window for most people to play in the NFL is a very big it's short, right? So do they have things in place for people that are in the NFL or any, like to manage your money? Like to help you invest in where to invest it? Because I mean, let's say you're on only playing for two or three years and you get you know, this much money. Do they have those in place to? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> they, so uh, especially as a rookie, you go through, uh, every rookie complains about it, but you go through uh, uh, I forget the, what they call it, the rookie symposium. You go out for a, a weekend between the draft and the camp, and you spend about three days just uh, with all kinds of formal players, financial experts. Uh, they talk about family, um, whatever it may be, and they, they kind of 
they're constantly um, trying to educate you on all that stuff, but they don't really, it's kind of on you though. I, I, a lot of guys will look for financial advisors, but I, I know as a player who, I, I had a financial advisor I you know, didn't end well with either. And so uh, I can't tell you how many players who just count on their financial guy, because this is what they say. They say, you just worry about what you gotta do on the field you know, I got everything's taken care of. And that's what you want to be able to, you want to be able to trust someone like that so you can just, I mean, if you ain't taking care of business on the field, you ain't going to have a job on there. It's kind of like Jim said, I mean, a lot of contracts, there's no repercussions for them just cutting you. So uh, so a lot of guys will, will find financial guys, but the league doesn't really, uh, they try to do as much as they can, but they, uh, they can only do so much. And so uh, I know a lot of programs, like as a rookie as well, you got to, Every Friday after practice, like it, every rookie hates it, but you got to go go through rookie school, and so they're they're constantly trying to educate you, but um, still it's a it's a problem, you know. A lot of guys struggle with that. I think uh, I think the average career is about three years. So like you said, um, there's not a huge window for a lot of guys. Some guys will play a few games, you know. You get some guys will play forever, but uh, but I think uh, what what the problem is sometimes is people like to think. Um, you start making some money that it's just going to be that way forever it, it is important to not spend money before you get it and make sure you, you do manage well i don't know if that answers your question but uh it is it is a lesson that um a lot of guys you know learn the hard way i have a question for mr simmons do you feel like do you feel like it do you feel like you needed the eight years of school to get where you are today that's a good question, because um, the politically correct answer is say yes, but um, I, <laughs> I got a debacle between uh, higher education because it is very important. But I'll tell you, within the last three years, I haven't put my degrees to use uh, very much, you know. Uh, and one of the one of the biggest things, uh, my biggest downfall. Uh, was actually public speaking. And uh, it was a fear I had. And um, after every game, they were interviewing me. I'd be stuttering. I, was, I didn't know what to say. I always looked like I was stupid in front of the camera. <laughs> and then like, my senior year, they started putting me in front of these D.A.R.E. programs and stuff. I had to go talk, out, talk in front of little kids. And uh, I was like, man, I'm horrible at talking in front of people. And so I conquered my fear. I just started signing up for everything. I was like, yeah, I want to talk there. Oh, I want to talk there. And little by little, I became better. That didn't have anything to do with a degree, you know? It was just a personal goal, you know? Now, I will say that uh, it's very important to get your undergraduate degree, okay? Because that's what's going to get you in the door in front of any employer. If you don't have your under, undergraduate degree, it's very hard to get any uh, decent job, to be honest, you know? Now, my opinion, this is just me talking, when you start to get graduate degrees, PhDs, if it's a generalized degree, sometimes it's not going to help you make money right at the beginning. It might make you, you might make a little bit more money at the end of your career, but as a, a, a student that's done an internship that has a master's degree, you're probably not going to make much more money than somebody that has an undergraduate degree. And you're doing the same job, right? So um, I, I feel like we are groomed to, first of all, work for other people. I think we are groomed to say, you know, we got to get a whole bunch of dis degrees to get opportunities. And I totally disagree with that now that I own my own business. You know, um, it's just my opinion. Right. So thank you. Hopefully, uh, yeah. All the questions? Yeah. So say, uh, if you can go back in time, and the opportunity was presented to you that you could have worked in what was doing for me. Marketing. Marketing? Yeah, marketing. Athletics. Athletics, yeah. athletics and marketing. And you would have gotten less pay, but that was something that you were passionate about. Or you could take the opportunity you did and make the money you made. Which one would you do? I wouldn't have done anything different. That's a great question. Because uh, I grew up very poor, right? And making money was... It was at the top of my priority list, okay? Uh, I was one of the three up here 
that everybody has, if you're playing football, if you play whatever sport, you have ambitions to go to the next level. If you don't, then something's wrong with you, right? I mean, because you want to be the best at what you do. So my whole life, I thought I was going to the NFL. And so there's a big difference between making $350,000 and $23,000, right? And so um, the way I circumvented that was, okay, I'm not, I wasn't going to do what I love. Even though I love what I do now, I didn't know I was going to love it then, right? So the way I get myself involved with athletics, this is what I love. This is how I'm giving back. No, I'm not in the marketing department, but if I get a call, if I, if I get a call to help out with a football camp, to do motivational speeches, this is how I give back, and this makes me feel good. I'm not getting paid to do this. I gotta be in Sun Valley, Idaho tomorrow at 8 a.m. in the morning. But you know what, I don't care, because I feel like I'm doing something worth my time, right? So that's how I kind of manage the two. I got another question for uh, Mr. Simmons. Um, sorry, that was a lot, but um, no, sorry. Just uh, you're starting out because you're from California, and you know, I just presume once your family's in California, was it scary to to start out a job in Idaho or start out a job where you knew you were going to be away from your family basically all year round and for the years to come? Was that something scary, or how did you? But you know, how did you handle all that? That's another great question because I think. Um, like when I started, when, I think you have those fears before you move from California to Idaho, right? It's like, I'm going to Pocatello, Idaho? But after, after you play football, you got relationships in the community, everybody knows you, you know, uh, it makes it a little bit easier, you know? Now, did I, did I wake up one day and say, hey, I'm gonna spend the rest of my life in Pocatello, Idaho? And like, hell no. I no. Do I like being away from my, my family in California? No, I do not. But the fact is, I made a living making enough money to where if I get tired of living in Pocatello or if I want to jump on a plane to go see my family, I can afford to do that now. And so it kind of it, it makes up for that. But I didn't have those initial thoughts after I finished my degree because I felt comfort within the community. You know, maybe I would have had those if I would have moved, you know, somewhere else where I didn't know anybody and I was still away from my family. But since that didn't happen, I'm not sure how those feelings would, you know, would be, to be honest. <coughs> okay, I have a question. Who would you say, I know the answer is a guess. Who would you say are the best people to keep in our circle that we know now? To keep, you know, close to us? Like our coach, teammates, or advisors to help us as we transition out? Who should we keep in contact with to kind of help us as we try and get better jobs? <laughs> <laughs> I'll answer it. I don't want to be more taken apart. I'm sorry. I would probably just say if you have a strong relationship with them, keep it. Just anybody. Yeah, because I think anyone can open a door. I mean, Amy Crosby is a former um, academic advisor here. That's how I have my job. Well, along with JT's help, MRAs, Brian's. Jake's, that's how I have my job. Otherwise, I will, might be sitting with you guys instead of up here. And I think what Jim said too, um, it's not about, what did you say? Well, who knows who you know. <laughs> it's who you know, but I also think it's also who knows you. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're married. <laughs> well, I think that answer is kind of twofold because, um, being on a team, being an athlete, uh, you, I mean, everybody has a little clicks that they, they hang out with, the group, you know. As you get older, uh, certain people start to go certain directions. And what you want to do is surround yourself with like-minded people that are going in the same direction as you are. Whether it doesn't matter what profession, but um, surrounding yourself with good people that aren't going to get you in trouble, first of all, you know. And then surrounding yourself with people that motivate you and you guys encourage each other to do better and be better, whether it's a person, whether it's a job, or whatever it may be. Now, on the flip side of that, your immediate friends are not always the people <laughs> that are going to be providing the opportunities, right? They're not going to be the ones hooking you up with a job, which, you know, you got to think about that too. So, you got to go out and network. You know, the last three contracts I signed, was because I was on LinkedIn, right? Because I'm on LinkedIn. 
And what I do, I mean, maybe once a month I go and I look up people's profiles, different CEOs, and I just connect with them. And then they start sending me emails, hey, we, we want to know more about you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I kid you not, there was two individuals, they flew from Germany to Pocatello, Idaho to meet me. I'm like, what? <laughs> a black dude in Idaho, you want to fly from Germany to meet me? And yeah, they found me on LinkedIn and they're trying to uh, start a product in the US, a surgical product, and they found Simmons Surgical and they flew out and met me. And so just that kind of networking, you want to network within business, but you also want to network with your friends and you got I mean, you want to go to the top with the people you love. You just don't want to meet everybody at the top with people you didn't, that didn't see you grow, you know? It's not fun. I mean, it doesn't matter how much money you make if you're surrounded by a whole bunch of people that weren't there at the beginning, right? And so you got to kind of balance the two. This is my opinion again. <laughs> All right, I have a question for you, Daniel. So, um, you talked about education, and you don't really use that as much. Um, I feel like in every single interview that I've had so far, it always comes back to sports, and I'm using my sports as, as my experience and the skills I've learned through sports. How has being a student athlete in college affected where you are now today? Well, I would say confidence is probably one of the biggest things, you know. Uh, I know several uh, orthopedic manufacturers, they only hire athletes. Seriously, they only hire athletes. Stryker is a company, they do total knees. They look for former athletes, whether it's former basketball, football, female, volleyball, it doesn't matter. They like the determination, the will not to lose. I mean, you can't you can't teach that, right? It's embedded in your DNA. It's, it's what we thrive on. When it comes to pressure, shooting that free throw, or catching the touchdown at the end of the game, you're locked in. Other people, everybody can't do that. They freak out. Can you imagine somebody being in the operating room? Like, so I'm in the operating room with a laser pointer, right? Doing a total show. And I'm telling the scrub tech exactly what to do. Now, if I freak out and the scrub tech freaks out, it messes up the whole surgery. Now, it takes a, a certain personality to be able to handle that. And that's why athletes are so important in the workforce, because you can handle the pressure. And talking about balancing the time, time management, you're already doing it. And so when it comes to being on time, when it comes to all that, you're doing that already on your teams. And so they already know the recipe, and the recipe is an athlete with a degree. Why do I need to look any further? So you're already ahead of the game. All of them are already ahead of the game. You just got to be motivated to go out and do whatever you want to do. Are there any of you guys that struggle with wanting too much? You know what I mean? Like you want to you wanna be a CEO, but then at the same time you want to be a coach. Or you want to own your own like foundation and things like that. Like just like you want to do everything. Any of you that struggle with that maybe? Well, I know where right now, that's, that's where my mind is. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a million different things, you know. And, uh, I think sometimes, I, I don't know if you truly can multitask or like do a lot of things at once. I think you, I think uh, if you want to do something well, you got to really have that laser focus and focus on that one thing. I mean, it doesn't mean you can't, you know, own your own business and do other things. But, uh, I think uh, like in the position I'm in, where I'm just trying to think of getting started with something, you know. I'm trying to think about ten different things I want to do, and uh, so, but I, I, to answer your question, yeah, I do. I do show that um, I'm in that position right now, wanting to conquer the world. You know, is that like a million different things. Nervous at times, like maybe like concerned of what your true passion is. Maybe then. Oh, uh, yeah. I, mean, I really thought of it in that sense. I actually kind of viewed it more as uh, um, excited. You know. I, so, uh, I mean, you pat, I mean, it's kind of kind of caught me in a position where I'm trying to you know, sort through some of that. But um, I, I, uh, I think it's, I think you can be passionate about a lot of different things, you know. And uh, you know, I, I want to try to figure out how to, you know, do all that. You know, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I have a question. Um, just going back to what Mr. Simmons was saying about. Uh, getting more degrees. Uh, I'd like to hear what everyone else thinks about it. 
just because for me, like I'm a psychology major, I'm um, going into community counseling, and I feel like an undergrad degree, like what would I do? Like I would scar people for life. <laughs> can I? Can I? You know? Well, I could, I could be, before I started that. I, I said generalized degrees, like business, MBAs, that kind of stuff. Now, if you talk about specialty degrees, that's a whole different ballgame, people. If you talk about specialty degrees, sometimes you can't do a job without having a degree. And so that's different. And so if you want to be an a RN, if you want to be a nurse practitioner or a PA, those take specialized degrees to do that specific job. You know. And so lawyers, doctors, whatever, I'm not saying that don't go that route. But a generalized degree, like a business degree, or something that's just everybody's doing it, where it doesn't matter, those are the degrees I'm trying to talk about. Sorry, just had to clarify my, yeah. So I'm not bashing those degrees. Yeah, I think if you are in a generalized degree, like for me, I did exercise science. Well, there's so many different umbrellas under exercise science that you can go exercise physiology, biomechanics, uh, sports psychology, motor learning, there's just so many different avenues. Um, for me, I wanted to make sure that I was doing something more specific. Um, and so that's why I went the corporate wellness route, was because I knew I wanted to be in some kind of corporation, um, helping those employees with their health and trying to get health care costs down in a specific corporation or company, or in this case, the university. So I think it's important to, to really narrow down um, and get your education in something not so broad. I, I would agree. Yeah, you want to hear from all of us, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would agree that, um, I mean, that's what we want to do. I mean, there's just certain, um, there's certain careers where you just have to have a certain level of education to even, you know, to even get a shot, you know. So, uh, but I think even just as important is continuing education. I know my uh, my girlfriend, she got her master's at Westminster. She's a therapist, but I remember I had a couple conversations with her. Um, so I know in my, it, I, this sometimes doesn't sound like a line of work, but in my line of work, playing football, um, you find out pretty quick, it really is a profession, and, uh, and uh, it's a business like anything else. But uh, I kind of, one thing I kind of learned playing is, if you're not getting better, if you're not improving, like you're just not going to be around, and you, you're never there. Like sometimes I think um, as a player, you just see a certain player, you just think, you know, you reach a level and you've, you've got it all figured out. And so something I really learned as a player early is you always got to be improving, get better all the time. So I think no matter what you're doing, like I had this conversation with her, it's just in her doing as a therapist, um, how much stress is put on continually improving. And she talked about all the time on how important it is to continue to be learning and growing. I, I don't matter what you do, I think you're always got to keep learning. And so I, I know uh, you don't have to have the degree necessarily to be an expert or something, but you know, I, one thing I've kind of learned is you know, if you've got to read a thousand books to figure something out, you know, that's, it's just going to give you all the more skills, all the more knowledge to be, to be great at whatever you're doing. Um, I talked to my dad a lot about this. I have this idea that I want to get a doctorate um, and I was looking into doing like uh, education leadership and doing the whole dissertation on Title IX and looking into um, ways that are financially efficient in balancing men's and women's participation budget and numbers wise. Um, but he always tells me uh, to just, if it's gonna like get you that much closer to what you wanna do, do it. It's just that one, like it's saying you're an expert in something um, and it's a qualification. But if you don't have the drive or the interest in the subject, don't touch it. I'm sorry, I'm just Kevin, right? I'm married and have four kids. I'm just glad I know you had a girlfriend. Tell us to have a boy here. <laughs> 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 I 